Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this week's video I wanted to do a time-lapse painting of the White Knight's watercolors that I did a review of last week. If you haven't seen that review then I go more in depth about these watercolors. I talk about the colors in the set, what I thought of it, some of the pros and cons, and who I thought this set would be really good for. In this week's video I'm not really going to go into that but I am going to show a painting that I did using these watercolors that I thought was probably the best positive example of them. If you are curious about the set that I'm using I will We'll leave that linked in the description box down below as well as some of the other materials that I'm using and if you are curious about that review that link will also be in the description box. Now for this painting I really wanted to pick something that had a lot of colors in it. I wanted it to be a really good example of a larger portion of the watercolors that I bought and just really showcase more of the range. So you'll see me using a lot of different colors and really just kind of experimenting with it and getting an idea of how this range is. I did a few other paintings with this. Uh, this was not the first one that I did. I just think it's the one that came out the best, so this is the one that I wanted to show you guys. For the base of the drawing, I used cadmium yellow medium, and I used that in the fleshy part of the apple and as well as the skin, and then to really show the more textured area of the skin, I went in with a mix of Matter Lake red light and some cadmium orange light and just kind of did a wet on wet and dropped that in. I wanted it to have a fuzzier look, more of a textured look to it, and then once that dried, I went in with the same mixture, the red mixture that I created, and I did an outline and I added some texture to the skin to kind of get that, that look that an apple would have. Since it did have a lot of variation in the color, I really wanted to show that. Uh, so I did my usual style with lots of glazing and layering in this painting, and it could really only do so much, but I was able to get some pretty good glazing in the beginning. For the prosciutto, I did a really nice salmon-y color. I used a little bit more of my cadmium red light. I did that really really light and then I just added just the tiniest bit of matter lake red light and did a really light glaze of that and then once that dried I went over it with the same mixture just kind of outlining the edges of it so that I had a better idea of where each layer was. Then I went back in with a slightly darker mixture of the matter lake red light. I believe I also used a bit of ruby in this one and added more detail to the skin of the apple. And while that was drying I did use uh, some yellowish green and I added some yellow to it just to get a warmer more yellow green to it. The yellowish green is really more bright and vibrant, but I didn't think that any of the other colors in this set were working the way that I wanted them to um, in order to get the flatter look that I wanted. And I did add some lines and some shadows in that first kind of glaze uh, just to get a, a better idea of the shape of it when I went back through. Now for the prosciutto I'm using the same mix that I was before and I'm just starting to add some little segments to it uh, since this has a lot of veining and segments and just these little sections within the meat I wanted to really show those and kind of get my first layer down leaving slightly lighter areas in between each of them that you could differentiate the segments of. And in between layers I'm going back in and I'm adding some more of my cadmium yellow medium. Uh, I may have had another color in there. I may have mixed it with a little bit of golden deep and uh, just kind of worked on the shadows. This was one area that I did have some trouble getting the depth that I wanted to. And you can see me going back in and darkening up some of those uh, segments of the prosciutto. Now there's this piece of cheese that was under all of that and I wanted it to stay white but also have some shadow and texture to it to show that it was kind of cut into so I did use a bit of Payne's Gray and a couple of other colors keeping it really light just to kind of show where the markings would be um, if you were to cut into it or break it apart. Uh, for the salmon I ended up going back in and using some orange and some pink just to really add some shadows and exaggerate those features since these are very very thin thin pieces. You're not really going to get the kind of shadow that you would want in a reference photo, so part of what I was doing was exaggerating that. Uh, plus I knew that throughout my glazes that were to come, I was going to end up darkening that a little bit. So having something that was a little bit unnatural just to really define those segments wasn't going to be uh, all that terrible. And you can see I'm going back in and I'm just darkening this mixture as I go and I'm maybe tweaking it a little bit with whichever color that I feel like will uh, be better. Part of doing this is just kind of varying your colors a little bit. So I'm going back and forth between the red and the orange that I used and I'm making some segments a little bit more pronounced than others. I'm also 
adding some shading within some of these. Part of it is to kind of emphasize that layered look uh, that is a little bit unnatural but really does work in the final piece. And part of that is better defining the different segments within this piece of prosciutto that's wrapped around it. And you can see that I work on that quite a bit. Uh, since in the grand scheme of things, it's not really the biggest part of this painting, but since it is right in the center, it is something that your eye kind of goes to right away. So I did want to work on that quite a bit and really kind of focus on my reference photo and see how each of those little segments looks and fades into one another and just how the color and everything would look in the final piece. I really wanted to focus on that and have it be more realistic since it's not something that I paint very often. It wasn't something that I could really do from memory. Not that if you if you want something that's a little bit more realistic then you should really focus on your reference photos anyway but this was something that was a little bit out of my comfort zone. And then you can see for the layer of the apple to really really bump up those shadows and the depth. I did end up going in with some of my golden color and and really emphasize the shadows around uh, the cheese and the piece of prosciutto and I really wanted that to be emphasized and normally for this I would add a little bit of purple but I tried that in another painting and it just didn't seem to mix quite the way that I was used to with any of the yellows. I'm not sure if it was something to do with the pigment. Um, I don't think that this is a dioxazine violet which is what I usually use which could have been part of my issue but either way I did end up going with shadows that were a little bit more vibrant than I'm used to, which may not uh, make this piece as realistic as what I would normally do. Overall, I don't dislike this photo. It's certainly not something that I'm going to put in a portfolio of any sort. Um, it's not something that I'm going to end up putting in a shop or anything. It's really just something to demonstrate these paints a little bit better and show some of the colors. Um, if you look at it really up close, then you can see that there is a few issues with the paint not set the way that I would want it to. There is a little bit more texture and just some oddities to it that I don't have in some of my professional paints. It's not the worst thing. It's not great. If you want something that has a little bit more texture, then you may like these. If you want a more thorough review, again, you can watch my previous video. But yes, that is my painting with these watercolors. I hope that you liked this time lapse. If you did, then maybe leave a like or a comment down below and I would be happy to read them in response to any of your comments or questions and that will be all for this video. I hope you are all having a wonderful day and I will see you next week. Bye!